Uh, you know, speaking of Lamar, Rashad Bateman, our next player, Mark Andrews, coming from that team. His uh, Dynasty League Football December startup ADP was tight end one, taking over Kyle Pitts for Dynasty League Football startup wow. ADP, which caught me off guard uh, because Mark Andrews isn't having that good of a season, especially lately. Uh, he's still tight end two on the season, but it's been really underwhelming as of late. In half PPR scoring, he's been under 10 points for seven straight weeks. Uh, now there's been the Lamar injury, which is obviously contributing to it. I think when that happened, a lot of people were, had fond memories of last year with Tyler Huntley, just absolutely feeding Mark Andrews in, in those games. Um, I, but I also think that people forgot that there's a reason that Tyler Huntley is just the backup to Mark, uh, to Lamar Jackson, Skyler, what are we doing with Mark Andrews? Because he's not helping you right now. Um, we're doing nothing with Mark Andrews. You're, you're keeping him on your team. I think tight end one, tight end two, you could make the argument. He really should be there just moving forward. Um, you know, this is a guy. He, yeah. I mean, when Lamar's not there, it is, it's been different for him, but there's not many tight ends out there that can give you 21, 25, 19, 20. Those were four games in a five game stretch. I think when he's on, he's as good as anyone in football. And when he's not, okay, you're getting seven points, nine points, nine points, but those are all, fringe tight end one or just inside tight end one finishes i mean uh this week this week he didn't hit the mark but for the five weeks prior he still finished as a tight end one right yeah. i mean you're looking at a guy who when everything goes wrong he's still starting for you i think the reason he he passed kyle pitts is people are struggling to just look in the mirror and take a guy as the tight end one off the board when he's not even he wasn't even startable this season when you had him um but with Mark Andrews, I, I'm not concerned at all moving forward. I mean, this is still a guy you're probably going to be taking the third round at minimum, probably in startup drafts. And I, I completely see every side to it. He's still young, and he's a very good football player. You know, he does a lot of things to the team well. He can get you there a lot of different ways, whether it's volume or if the touch rate is moving back, he can get in the end zone for you. So I wouldn't be panic selling or moving off Mark Andrews. The tight end market is just so darn murky. And this is a guy I really want to hold on to. This is a guy that I'm building teams around. Um, so I would just I would just tell people to have patience. And I mean, if you can use this five or six game stretch somehow to go knock on the door of the owner and be like, How are you feeling, buddy? I've I've got <laughs> I've got, you know, Dallas Goddard and a, a, a late second for you yes yeah, I mean, second might get it done right i'm now. taking that trade or if you somehow you're using you know boosted weeks from dawson knox gerald everett uh sorry uh, evan ingram to you know package with a flex player to to tear up to andrews i mean that's a move i would be looking to make uh i just i would expect most of your andrews managers to have patience and you should as well yeah i, tr I tried to lay the trap for you to see <laughs> if I can get <laughs> over here, react here, but yeah, I mean, he's Mark Andrews. Don't overreact to this. I would say uh, brighter skies are ahead for him, in my opinion. Seth, you with us? Yeah, I mean, he's still number one, number two in most opportunity metrics: targets, target share, route participation. The issue is like all those games that you mentioned. That four out of five game stretch that was when he had double digit reset or targets. He's only seen that those games this season. Four of those games this season, as opposed to last year, um, he had eight double-digit target games. So I want to see them use him more. And, and once we saw the, the receivers go down this season, when, once we saw Bateman go down, I thought we were going to see more Mark Andrews, and we really haven't. Same with Devin Duvernay, though. Like, Devin Duvernay is super talented, but Greg Roman doesn't get him involved enough. Like, super There's efficient. Greg Roman again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, just efficient wide receiver. And so I think overall, like he's still the tight end one. Um, but if someone wanted to come come by him, like I have him in a lot of leagues that he kind of lost me the league this week, I felt like. So I'm willing to listen to offers, but I'm not selling him, you know, for pennies. Yeah, still full, still need full price if you're gonna move on from Mark Andrews. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> Guy's elite, an, an elite asset. I mean, even if he finishes seasons like 2020 where he wasn't getting those double-digit targets, grant his touchdown rate was up and the offense was more efficient 2019, 2020. He's a guy who still could finish tight ends five, tight end six. You know, I mean, if you do choose a hold on, there's a lot of value there. There's not a lot of guys who you can almost count on without injury to be a top half tight end one every single season. And, you know, unless if the, complete, the situation in Baltimore completely changes, I don't expect that 
to that to go that's, away. That's from the Mark other Andrews question and, mark here, man. Is like, does that situation change? There's a lot up in the air with Lamar Jackson now. Yeah. He kind of left it in in Fate's hands this year. I don't know if it says a lot that they're struggling without him or that you know <laughs> that he got hurt again. So a lot of question marks there, guys. It's just like how risky do you want to get with it? I guess. Yeah, yeah there, I, there there are absolutely some question marks about the offense moving forward in terms of what it's going to look like, who's still going to be there, I guess. But I also think Mark Andrews is one of those elite assets that a team builds around, and he will always be a featured part of the offense, and you can rely on that. Yeah, I mean, even the offense is just, it's significantly different with these backup quarterbacks. Even with the backup quarterbacks, I mean, of course, it's all about um, how efficient he's going to be, but he's still been the favorite guy. You know, everyone who comes in, he is still the lead guy. The offense, uh, they don't have the receivers who are necessarily ever going to leave him game scripted out or anything like that. And I don't expect that to change in the next two seasons. And even with Lamar, there might be uncertainty long term, but I think you can expect at least one more season from Lamar Jackson in Baltimore in whatever capacity that is. Because even if they don't agree, which it's trending that way, I mean, you're, you're looking at a tag. There's there's just no way that this guy's yeah. just walking Will away from it, Baltimore. Though? That's the only question, but how many guys have said, no, I'm not playing from the quarterback position? And you talk about how much money he would be giving up by just not doing yeah. it, where as long as he doesn't get hurt, he's going and, to get some payday You know, at some point. It just might not be that Deshaun Watson contract that he really wants. And even when a player says, I don't want to play on the tag, that usually means they're going to get a deal done. Uh, the teams are going to come to them and say, okay. I mean... The Ravens should have already just laid out a blank check for Lamar Jackson, you know, and gotten this figured out. But yeah, I mean, it's like the Dak Prescott in Dallas. Every single day that they let this thing go on, it just becomes a more expensive mistake for Baltimore. Yeah. And inevitably, unless this franchise really wants to shake everything up, as a betting man, I would say they get they get something done. It just might not be what they both initially wanted.